Thousands of migrants, mostly from the Middle East, remain in limbo right now in Belarus. The European Union and the U.S. accuse Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko of luring migrants and refugees to his country as an easy entry point to Poland, which is a member of the EU. Poland says its Russian-backed neighbor is orchestrating the migrant crisis. Hundreds of them are seeking shelter in this Belarus warehouse as some deal with sickness and injuries. Lukashenko's actions concerned Western powers well before these recent issues. In response to his tactics, a handful of U.S. senators formed the Free Belarus Caucus over the summer. For more, I want to bring in co-chairs of the bipartisan caucus. Senator Jean Shaheen is a Democrat from New Hampshire, and Senator Roger Wicker is a Republican from Mississippi. They are both joining from Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Canada, where they're attending the Halifax International Security Forum. Senators, welcome to you both. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk about this migrant crisis that's happening there. Appreciate it. Thank you. Senator Shaheen, I'm going to start with you. What kind of muscle does your caucus have in addressing the crisis in Belarus? I, I think we're looking at all of the ways that we might be helpful, not just in terms of this particular crisis, but also as we look at how do we support the opposition in Belarus that has been so effective against Lukashenko? I, I think the polls are correct that this migrant crisis is happening because it's being orchestrated by Putin. Um, it's hard to imagine that Lukashenko would do that on his own. And we need to take steps, not just the United States, but the EU against um, not just Lukashenko, but those, all of those private sector and um, public partners who are helping him in this effort to get those migrants to the border. Um, it's, it is unfathomable and just reprehensible that they would be using desperate people who are trying to get a better life in this way to weaponize them to use against mm -hmm. Europe and against the opposition in Belarus, because that's really what it's aimed at. Senator Wicker, uh, you heard your colleague talk about the connection with, uh, with Russian President Vladimir Putin. It's no secret that Lukashenko shares a close relationship with the Kremlin. Um, but, uh, but he denies actually being involved directly in the migrant crisis, though yesterday he admitted that Belarusian troops may have provided assistance. Can you tell us a bit more about what responsibility you think Russia plays in helping to also uh, orchestrate this crisis, and what responsibility the international community has to these migrants? Uh, Lukashenko does have a close relationship with um, Vladimir Putin and his dictatorship in Russia, but also uh, President Lukashenko is 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 the junior partner, and and to a certain extent he's he's fearful of Vladimir Putin. So uh, both of those impulses play in here, and I would just agree with uh, Senator Shaheen. Just when you think you've seen it all. Uh, then, then you, you see uh, two repressive uh, 20th century or even earlier type uh, dictators orchestrating uh, an immigration crisis uh, like this. It, it's, uh, it, it's amazing. You ask what we could do. Uh, well, what we do in a caucus is call attention and shine the light of day on, on this. And I'm, I'm glad to be joining with Democrats and Republicans, House and Senate members, in this Free Belarus Caucus. Uh, the administration does have tools. Sanctions have been imposed. Uh, there's some uh, further blocking action done by the Biden administration. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we, we can't, uh, the House and Senate Caucus can't, go in with policing powers, but we can shine the light of day and bring uh, uh, international condemnation on this outrageous act, uh, not to mention, of course, the stealing of an election, uh, 800 political 
prisoners, and uh, and I, I could go on and on uh, about this notorious uh, Belarusian dictator. But what we can also do is, because Congress has the power of the purse, we can also support um, Poland, Lithuania, those countries around Belarus that are um, home to refugees who have fled Lukashenko's uh, repression in Belarus. And certainly we need to do that and support democracy building efforts in Eastern Europe. You know, it is really refreshing, I'm sure, for our viewers and somewhat surprising to have a Democratic and Republican senator sitting together, joining uh, together on an issue of true bipartisanship, uh, saying that they think that the administration uh, has tools, that Congress has tools, and that they are all willing to get together to wield them to try and bring attention to this crisis. But bipartisanship is so hard to come by right now. What is it about these issues that bring the two of you together? I'll, I'll let you answer first, Senator Wicker. Well, don't, don't be surprised about that, and particularly when it comes to freedom um, and the ability of our former Soviet uh, satellite friends to continue to be free and, uh, and have self-determination with their own borders. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of bipartisanship uh, on this issue, and uh, the the things that uh, make the first five minutes of of network news or get on the front page uh, necessarily are, are are the controversial things, but beneath that, uh, particularly when it comes to speaking out for freedom and uh, and, and uh, giving uh, gi giving cover and and moral support to people uh, who only wish to govern themselves um, and, and have the people make the decision rather than dictatorship. Uh, that's something that we've agreed on for, for quite some time. So don't be too surprised at that. That's absolutely right. We are here in Halifax for the International Security Forum with a bipartisan delegation, three Republicans, three Democrats, um, and I would say on all of, in every panel that we've participated in, we have been very much aligned on our foreign policy and the positions that we support. Well, we have seen some measures of bipartisanship coming out of Washington, so it's not to say that uh, that it's that uh, that it's as as rare as seeing uh, you know a pink elephant necessarily in the wild, but it is still something that is unusual to see Republicans and Democrats getting along and and uh, and appearing to be on the same page. Senator Shaheen, when it comes to the social and climate spending bill, uh, unlike the bipartisan infrastructure bill, um, which which did pass with bipartisan support. This bill is now in your chamber's hands, and it increases. Uh, it has an, an increase in the state and local tax deduction limit. I want to ask you uh, about bipartisanship and how potentially these good feelings might might carry on to that. Uh, in part because when we're talking about salt deductions, that doesn't really benefit your constituents. And you criticized former President Trump's tax reform bill back in 2017, saying that it would benefit high-income earners, which many opponents also argue. Uh, is the same with SALT. Are, are these tax changes something that you think you can vote yes on? And what do you think the bill's passage prognosis is right now? Well, I think the bill is going to undergo a number of changes in the Senate. I think the SALT provisions are one of those, because I don't think the highest income individuals should be able to take those tax deductions. We want to help those people who are middle income, who have contributed so much to building this country. As, um, as we look at tax changes, we want to help those families who have been falling behind over the last uh, decade or so. So I think we're going to see a lot of changes, not just in that provision, but in others, in order to get the bill through the Senate. And you think it, you're optimistic that it will, in fact, pass the Senate with those changes? I am optimistic that the Senate will make changes that will allow the bill to pass through the Senate, yes. All right, and Senator uh, Wicker, course, I'll give you an opportunity. It, it will not pass, but... <laughs> I know. Well, I was going to say, you voiced opposition say, uh, to this package. Are there right, any elements I'm, of this package that you that, that you do support it, if it was taken separately? 
Well, let, let me agree with, with Senator Gene Shaheen about the SALT provision in the House bill. I mean, basically, uh, every House Democrat except one has now voted for an enormous tax break for the wealthiest Americans in the, high, in the highest tax states. So uh, I, I hope the bill doesn't pass at all, but uh, I'm, I'm delighted to hear my colleague uh, from New Hampshire say that that provision should come out. I, I think the best thing we can do for Americans right now um, it is uh, uh, do what we can not to add to this uh, enormous inflation problem that we're having. I was opposed to uh, the, um, the, the stimulus bill that was passed uh, by the House and Senate in March and signed by, uh, by, by President Biden then. I, I think it has had an inflationary effect. And as people are sitting down to their Thanksgiving tables, uh, they're going to see that, that uh, a Thanksgiving dinner costs uh, much more and a gas uh, a tank of gasoline cost uh, a whole lot more um, because of the gr of the spending and the uh, energy policies of this administration over the past few months. So I think the best thing we can do uh, is turn the the federal spigot off and um, and not add to the inflationary pressure. That is going to be the major problem that American families see. Uh, through Thanksgiving and Christmas and on, uh, well on into the next year. And I hate to disagree Certainly with my inflation. bipartisan friend here. I was going to say, I was going to say. <laughs> and break that discussion. <laughs> um, please go ahead. But, but <laughs> please go ahead. The Senator fact Sheehan. is we know that what we're experiencing is the result of the COVID pandemic, the pent up demand, and we all have to work to address that. And I think one of the ways to do that is long term to make these investments to reduce the disparity between the top income earners and um, families at the bottom. And that's one of the things this um, Build Back Better plan does. I, I think we would all agree that investing in kids um, in universal pre-K, in child care so that pe parents can go back to work, in home care so that people who are helping to take care of aging parents and other um, disabled family members get the help they need. So there's a lot of help in this bill. It's going to be fully paid for, so it is not going to increase inflation. And hopefully we can get this done before the end of the year and we can all work together on the other issues that are facing this country. And as my well, friend says, supply chain is one of those. Uh, so many things Senator in that Jean Shaheen, Senator with, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to join hands, <laughs> Senator uh, Roger Rucker, you with know, her in, uh, in I, I, and standing fast with the people of I'm the Belarus. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I really, you know what, I really do appreciate uh, the ability to hear politicians from both sides of the aisle have a healthy debate you know, about I issues that are so important to all hearing. of us. Oh, and we appreciate so it. Here. Senator Jean Shaheen, Senator Roger Wicker, thank you. Thank you.